Hello everyone. Today we are going to uh, discuss about the peptic ulcer disease, that is PUD, and this will be uh, the continuation of the last video because the last video gave us a hint or a kind of a ground for us to understand the peptic ulcer disease. <coughs> so now we are going to see the peptic ulcer. So what is actually a peptic ulcer? When we say peptic, something anything that is related to uh, environment that is aid in the digestion of food especially the stomach and then the duodenum. You know. so it, they are related to a peptic environment then ulcer when we say ulcer it's a kind of like we can say a wound if we say a wound in our normal maybe for example in our limbs in our hand we can get a wound maybe from uh, from nail or from from knife then you can get a wound something like that so the ulceration actually and then it is this so we have already made this so ulceration is a kind of like punch out defect like punch defect like like this punch defect because we have already known that the stomach is actually kind of having uh, some of uh, kind of layers we have the mucosa layer we have sub mucosa we have muscularis mucosae and then we have the adventitia so these layers are actually in the uh, peptic ulcer almost all the layers are, are involved with the exception of the adventitia and then the second to the last layer so it's a kind of wound like this mostly so this is let us see the wound so this is this is how the ulcer look like this is how the this is the stomach also you see this is in the body because the the mostly the the, the bacteria that is ate in the uh, the uh, portion of ulcer is not uh dealt cannot dealt with living in the pandas because the pandas is high there is high amount of acid in the pandas so it cannot live here so that's why mostly the, the ulcers are found in the body or in the antrum so this is the duodenum this is the duodenal ulcer so this is the kind of hole or oh, shallow that do not cross all the way down to the whole layers of the stomach so this is the healthy this is how the healthy stomach supposed to look like so this is the healthy stomach so this is the peptic ulcers so the type of the, the peptic ulcers actually types types peptic ulcer disease it can either be gastric ulcer or it can either be duodenal as we have already saw the the picture of the image duodenal ulcer so that's it so let, now let us see the causes so what causes this ulcer so the etiology or to see the cause causes of ulcer so the number one cause of ulcer actually worldwide is we have the h pylori or let me write in full helicobacter pylori abbreviated as h pylori number one number two we have some kind of drugs especially the NSAID non-steroidal uh, non anti-inflammatory uh, drugs that's an example we have aspirin so this is a very very naughty drug it has toxic effect in the liver it has toxic effect in the kidney it has that's why the, the patient that used to have this ulcer due to this aspirin they are mostly for example put put the bolus because put the bolus are almost getting injury so because due to that uh, orthopedic injury they used to take there is chronic or long time use of this aspirin so they don't know that there is a sudden a kind of damage the stomach it can cause this ulceration so that's it now we are going to see the third cause the stress also the stress cause as the stress that is known as a stress stress also but this uh, stress also actually it is mostly seen with duodenal ulcer while the helicobacter the NSAID is mostly associated with the stress ulcer and that doesn't mean that this stress ulcer cannot be seen in the stomach it can also be seen in the stomach but mostly it is associated with the duodenum so that's it so now we are going to see how this pathogen because this is a, almost the most common cause of the gastric ulcer so now we are going to see how this helicobacter pylori live in the stomach and then it dare to cause the, the ulcer so now pathogen that the pathogenesis
that is a pathogenesis so this helicobacter pylori actually it can uses the because it also it is a part of the acid because the acid can kill it but how, how do this helicobacter pylori stay in our stomach and this and cause this ulcer is this helicobacter pylori can produce an enzyme or it has an enzyme called pyl uh, ureus helicobacter pylori has ureus enzyme this enzyme called ureus so this ureus from that ureus this ureus can take uh, a kind of urea from the uh, from the stomach because we can have urea from the stomach so we can it, it, it take this urea take the urea and then convert the urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide convert urea that urea is converted into ammonia ammonia is WM plus carbon dioxide this ammonia is very very toxic gas we are a product of this ammonia so this gas all of them are gases both of the, uh, the ammonia and the carbon dioxide so this urea under the influence on this urea convert the urea into this so this ammonia it why do this bacteria produce this ammonia is to increase the ph that is to neutralize the acidity of the uh, uh acidity of the stomach so that to to allow the bacteria to live but in the same manner this ammonia is the toxic to the stomach it is causing the ulcer so that's it so it is not the bacteria itself but the ammonia that is produced by the bacteria that causes the ulceration and then due to also inflammation because some our immune system are going to react against the helicobacter pylori so in the presence of killing the helicobacter pylori they end up also damaging or exacerbating the damage to the stomach that is causing the ulcer so that's it so that is this is how the bacteria live inside the the stomach so now we are going to see the symptoms of symptoms of gastric let us see the symptoms of gastric ulcer first number one symptom the number one symptom is if you gastric pain if you gastric So the number one cause is the epigastric pain. We have already saw the epigastric pain in the last video. This is epigastric region. So pain mostly arouses from here. So this is the epigastric region. So the epigastric pain because we, we can easily have pain because of the ulceration. So the second symptom we have a kind of uh, bloating, bloating and a sensation of fullness sensation of fullness so someone can experience the stomach is always full so that's why he can have loss of appetite loss of appetite so why the patient will be always kind of having sensation of fullness in his stomach and this bloating when we say bloating is distension of the stomach due to because as we have already known that the bacteria is producing ammonia and carbon dioxide and this ammonia and carbon dioxide are gases so they fill up the stomach send this patient will be complaining of having a sensation of fullness in his stomach and then the bloating so due to sensation of fullness so he can eat because whenever he eat this epigastric pain is exacerbated the, uh, the epigastric pain is produced more and more because why we have already saw in the last video that whenever you eat food the, the stomach gets distended and when the stomach gets distended that is the gastric uh, phase of secretion of the acid began so the there is more production of the acid and more production of the acid more uh, uh torsion the or uh, uh, irritating the the wound so that's it so exacerbating the pain so the symptom of also we the patient can have if the ulcer is untreated for a long time he may even have a kind of hematemesis hematemesis when we say hematemesis means emesis means uh vomiting hema means blood so vomiting of blood mostly it is present as coffee colored it is not real blood but it is blood but be because it is oxidized in the stomach now it turns out to be a coffee colored so the vomiting that is containing uh, blood so that's it then we are going to see the symptom of symptom of duodenal ulcer 
to let us find from the back. So the symptom of duodenal ulcer, the most important and the common symptom of duodenal ulcer is the it's gastric pain. It's gastric pain. And one thing that will make you to differentiate between the pain due to duodenal ulcer and the pain due to gastric ulcer is the duodenal ulcer present the pain actually during at night. The patient will wake up at night due to pain and he can only get relieved from that pain after he eat food. So whenever he eat food, then he get better. So if you can remember from the gastric ulcer, the patient complained that if he eat food, then the gastric, the gastric pain began. But in the duodenal ulcer, he only get better at night when he eat food. So this is the very, very good point to differentiate between the duodenal ulcer and the gastric ulcer, uh, duodenal ulcer and the gastric ulcer. So that's it. So this is the most important uh, symptom, that's the gastric pain that wakes the patient up at night. At night and eat food. So whenever he eat food, then he get better. So that's it. So now we are going to see the treatment. How we treat this ulcer? Treatment. Treatment. So for you to, to get rid of any kind of disease, you have to get rid of the the cause. What caused the disease? If, for example, it is due to onset, that is due to aspirinus, so you have to stop. Onset stop. You have to stop taking the onset. So onset has to stop. So if it is not due to the onset, now you have to. Uh, definitely, it will be definitely due to H. pylori. So if it is due to the uh, H. pylori, H. pylori is a bacteria, so you have to get antibiotics. So this stop onset and then plus maybe omeprazole. So that's it. This is a proton pump inhibitor. So for the killing of the bacteria, you have to use a macrolide class. This class of antibiotic called macrolide. We have clarithromycin in this class. We have clarithromycin. We have azithromycin. Thromycin. We have strep, uh, we have uh, erythromycin. So that's it. So in pregnant women, you used to use. You have to use this. This is the safest drug used in pregnancy. Every pregnant woman is having ulcer, so you have to use this azithromycin. So we have group of penicillin, which is amoxicillin, broad spectrum amoxicillin. So Apart from this, this uh, penicillin, this macrolide first inhibit the growth of the bacteria because it decreases in the synthesis of protein. So without some protein, because some protein are they are crucial or they are very important in the uh, reproduction of the reproduction of the bacteria. So if you give macrolide, then it will stop the growth of the bacteria. And then if you give penicillin together, then it, the penicillin definitely will kill the bacteria. So now we have to give. Omeprazole, omeprazole, which is proton pump inhibitor, proton pump inhibitor, omeprazole, omeprazole. So then you have to give a uh, kind of we have H2 blockers like semitidine. Like antigen. So this is actually this is the drug, but mostly nowadays the H2 blockers are not used anymore in the treatment of ulcer. So only the macrolide are used between these two: macrolide, penicillin, then proton pump inhibitor. This are, this is called triple regimen. That's treatment triple therapy in the uh, treatment of ulcer. Now H2 blockers, they are not used anymore. They are used maybe rarely, but they are not there used. So in the patient who can not take amoxicillin, you can change it and give him metronidazole, which is an unclassified antibiotic, metronidazole. Someone who cannot take amoxicillin. So that's it. So now uh, we are going to see the there's, there's another drug called antacid, anti, not anti-acid, but anti-acid, 
بتاعتي اكزامبل الومنيوم الومنيوم هيدروكسيد لايك وي هاف مغنيسيوم هيدروكسيد سو ذس تو اند يو هاف تو فيري كيرفول فور ذا الومنيوم هيدروكسيد يو كانوت جيف ات تو اولد وومن بيكوز ان اولد وومن ذي ار فيري برون تو ديفلوب Uh, osteoporosis that weakening of the bone of their bone due to lack of estrogen so you have to give uh, because this itself can cause osteoporosis so you have to change it to magnesium hydro uh, hydroxide so that is the end of the answer and but before we go maybe you have to know complication complication so the most important complication we have to know is anemia because He is bleeding. The patient is bleeding due to the the this thing, the, the due to the ulceration. So he may end up getting anemia, which is an iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia. That is microcystic and then hypochromic. So that's it.